Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shaketa Thomas, your current president for CoAve, and I just want to welcome you to Advocacy April, and thank you so much for joining us because we do feel as though advocacy is definitely for everyone because everyone has a voice. And before I go too much further, I just want to also thank our partner, Essential Education, um, for being a partner in this you know, important work that we are doing, getting out there, spreading the message of how important adult education is to the fabric of American life. So without further ado, we really want to get in there and, you know, get a lot of bang for your buck in this hour and, and get everyone set on their way as we kick off the first day of April and really getting you into April advocacy. So there's a couple of things that I like to talk about when you're setting up your meetings and going out there and speaking on behalf of adult education and co-aid. And, and that is, you know, we are truly wanting the support from the left, the right, and all the way in the middle because adult education is, is not um, a concern for only a select group. Adult education is a concern for everyone. We want everyone to have the skills, the resources, the tools, and the knowledge to be able to improve upon their lives and reach their own set goals and expectations. So with that being said, um, CoAge vision and model is that we're very courteous when we go in and select um, and meet with different select parties. Um, we keep our agenda very simple and only focus on adult education and what is impacting adult education in this current moment. For example, funding, right? Um, all of our programs could need, um, could use a lot more funding. Another issue that we may be having, you know, some concerns about or wanting to go in and talk about is our workforce or our CTE programs or IET programs or the NRS tables. So those things that directly impact how we're able to function as adult ed providers is what we like to go in and speak about. So again, we only focus on adult education. And, and remember, when you go set up your meetings, make sure you invite some of your key team players. And that is, you know, from the state association, um, if the state office is willing to join, that's great. But don't forget about your students or your advocacy members, your SAFE fellows, um, who are very well equipped um, in being able um, to provide you with some of these key talking points. So I know we got a little bit of everyone on the call. And so I see some of the states going up. Hello, Nashville. Hello, Oklahoma. Um, but if you could also put in the chat, um, your position, whether you're a state director or you're a SAFE fellow, um, let us know that. I would like to know who is in the room. Joining me today to, to kick off April Advocacy are some of my dear greatest friends in this work, um, Jeff, and I know all of you know and love Jeff, as well as Aaron, and they will both together um, give you some good talking points, how to design your, your meetings and how to just get out there and start promoting um, adult education during April advocacy. Again, I just wanna say so much, thank you so much for being here and being a part of our advocacy efforts during April advocacy. So at this moment, I will go ahead and turn it over to Erin. Erin. Hello, so my name is Erin Babornik. I work at COEB as the Students as Leaders Coordinator. I'm also co-chair with the incredible Jeff Abramowitz um, for the State Advocate for Adult Education Fellowship, which is what we mean when we say safe. So I'd like to get us um, started here and just kind of set, set the table for advocacy. So while it is important to try new methods of advocacy, uh, one reason that people don't even start is sometimes they don't see themselves in the efforts that are shown in the media, right? They, they see, oh, that's what advocacy is. Uh, that's not really my style. So I'm gonna share a personal story um, of kind of how I got, got into this work. So I actually only applied to be the state advocate for adult education fellow, the SAFE fellow um, in 2021, because of the 2024 COAB Administrator of the Year, Lori Kirsten Joseph of Arizona. And it's because in a webinar, she stated that she is an introvert and an advocate. 
And until that moment, despite wanting to advocate, I didn't think that I had the skills. I thought I needed to be somebody who is comfortable walking into a room, you know, putting out my hands, shaking hands. Um, and that is not me. However, when she said that, I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to put my name in the hat and let me tell you advocacy has changed my life. And I really hope that the advocacy I've done has had an impact. Um, I know that it has at least on the local level. So today we're here to tell you that you already have the skills. You just need to find the method that is right for you. And that kind of brings me here to this, this quote and all of these pictures that you see, which are of, um, actual people in our field doing advocacy work. This is all from our Padlet, which is to shape advocacy to you instead of trying to shape yourself to advocacy. So throughout this webinar, I want you to keep in mind that advocacy is not the destination, right? Um, it is the path. We don't advocate for the sake of advocating. Our goal may be um, an improved digital infrastructure in our community, increased ability to serve those who enter our programs, and everything else that comes with increased funding. But the way we get there is advocacy, and we can all take different paths to get there. So we'll give you a high-level overview of the different paths that you can take, the different ways you can engage in advocacy for our shared goals with the hope that in this advocacy April, you take that leap and you try to follow one of those paths that you advocate in the way that makes sense for you, that makes sense for your community. So let's get started with what most people think when they hear advocacy. They think legislative outreach, and I can think of nobody better to talk about legislative outreach than Jeff Abramowitz. So, so thank you, everybody, and welcome. Um, happy April 1st. I was thinking of an April Fool's joke for all of you, but no need, no need. I think that um, when we talk about legislation, that there is no fooling around with this. And I, I love the saying, you miss 100% of the shots you never take, which is super, super true, because oftentimes, you know, we have the ability to just by asking, uh, raising an issue or an awareness on an, on something that often can have a, a really wide reaching impact. So I want you to be thinking about um, over the, the coming month and advocacy April, um, like how is it that you can really best use your resources and tools to advocate, to share a concern that you have, to share your awesomeness, um, to tell the stories of your students. And that's really what it comes down to. And a lot of this is um, it starts with legislative meetings. It starts with meeting one on one with uh, legislators with and, and I, I want to be clear too when we talk about legislative meetings, um, sometimes we think about going into uh, the Capitol and actually meeting with senators and congressmen. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it. But the truth is many of us meet with legislators all the time and we probably don't even really realize it. For example, we're at a community event and Alrighty, so I I do love technology and our ability to connect. <laughs> I, I think it. I'm okay. back. There you go. I'm sorry. Yes, you're back. I got kind of I, I got kind of wonky on my uh, Wi-Fi. I apologize. I'm going to turn my camera off so you can hear me. But legislative meetings really is a matter of meeting with whoever you can in order to share a point that you might have. And part of that is, you know, your local mayors, your local council people, um, and really just starting up a dialogue because it's those people that can raise your voice um, inside of um, inside of 
the the legislature and really looking at how they can make change happen in adult education. Some of the other things you might want to think about are just having small rallies, inviting um, legislators to your um, to your facilities, holding small events, um, maybe just grabbing coffee or lunch with a local representative, um, talking to your um, your city council people, your state representatives, and really just creating that relationship. Legislation and advocacy is all about relationships, and this is the time to begin to really set the tone for what it's going to look like in 2025 for a strong adult education system. So I encourage you to reach out. And again, just I know it's uncomfortable sometimes, but make that initial contact. The COEB uh, website makes it super easy for you on the three clicks platform to set up some of those meetings. And it's just super, um, super, super easy. But again, you know, you're never gonna know unless you try. And um, trust me, you're all gonna be better for it, not only today and over the next year in whatever positions you hold, but just in general, being vested in the community as a community leader. Um, you can go to the next slider. The, Last thing I wanted to, to talk about is really how and the how to. And besides meeting people and and really one on one contact with individuals, um, we have a really some really easy tools. Um, social media using LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook are really easy ways of sharing a message, letting people know about Advocacy April. Same thing with blogs or blog posting, um, op ed pieces, and submitting things to your local newspaper are um, really easy lifts for you to kind of get the word out about what this month is and, and how important it is in improving our adult education systems. And then the last thing I'm super familiar with, as is Aaron, is podcasting and live events. Um, running a podcast or being on a podcast and highlighting the importance of adult education and sh and really showing the light, uh, shining the light on our students is an unbelievably great way to kind of um, to raise the, the voice of adult learners in our country and um, super easy to do. Um, live events are a little more tricky, a little time to or orchestrate, but even a pop-up, um, a pop-up meeting or a pop-up social or a pop-up happy hour. I was invited to a, a breakfast happy hour um, last week. That was just a pop-up and it, garnered, it had about a hundred people there. It was really an easy, fun event that highlighted um, really doing great work in the adult education field. So a lot of different alternatives, be creative, be inventive, but go out there and use the, the media and the tools that are right at your fingertips to make it really super easy. Aaron, back to you. Hey, and for this, I would love if um, if Lucy Lester is here, if she can join as a panelist. And while that's happening, I'll I'll kind of get this. Hi, Lucy. I'll get this set up. Um, is the fact that advocacy doesn't need to fit a specific shape or form. So, like Jeff already said, there is legislative advocacy, which for some people is um, intimidating or challenging, but there are also other ways outside of social media advocacy and, and podcasting and writing up ads to be able to engage in advocacy. And one phenomenal example of this is the work that Lucy Lester has done in West Virginia. So uh, Lucy, if you would like to kind of explain what it is we're seeing on the screen and how you have taken an innovative approach to advocacy. Lucy, you're muted. It's all these April Fool's um, <laughs> technology bugs that are getting us right now. Um, Lucy? There we go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, so sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I would absolutely love to explain some of this. Um, what we're doing here in West Virginia, it is a little bit outside of the box, and we um, advocate with legislators, of course, and they're being wonderful with us because we have had such a draw from communities 
Uh, we started out with uh, here, Raleigh County, just doing some little things uh, with the teachers and instructors and the students. Um, we kind of partnered with the Department of Highways, and this is one way that we're giving back to our community and cleaning up our spaces, making West Virginia beautiful. Uh, and at the same time, the Department of Highways, they donate signs to us on the highway, and they show off how adult education is uh, doing their part in the community, keeping uh, everything safe and healthy. And we get free, you know, we get free signs and advertising from that. And then people see the impact and it brings us together as a team. And when we do things like this, our legislators are seeing that. And it's just a wonderful feeling inside everyone. So they want to be a part of that. And another thing we're doing is um, we have done uh, the Christmas parades, Thanksgiving parades. Uh, I've done so many floats and, uh, you know, we use our imagination. And as you can see in this one picture, we have the American flag. And I felt like Betsy Ross putting that thing together. It was an eight by eight flag that we did in the background. And we put West Virginia Adult Ed. And we just wanted to show that, you know, we are all over the country, adult education, and we are giving back to students. Uh, and as you can see, my daughter's there. You know, I make it a family thing. I think everyone knows I'm all about family and community. So uh, when people see this, they it lets them know that we're real. We're here for their needs. And, um, you know, we've got our 800 number on there. And then you can also see there's a tent there. We do fall festivals. We do um, just anything that the community allows us to be a part of. We want to get involved with. And one of the new things we're doing is uh, books. A lot of people have... The internet is taking over everything, it seems, and, and that's a great thing because I love technology, but books, we uh, kind of recycle the books, and we put out free books, and you'd be surprised how many times that um, a child or their parent or somebody will come up, and they'll, and they'll take that book, and then we get to talk to them. It gives us an opportunity to talk to them about adult ed, and our senators and some of our legislators uh, I'm seeing them show up at these community functions because there's so much power behind these. Uh, you would think that you're just reaching a few, but you're reaching. I handed out 3,000 flyers at a trunk or treat with children, and I handed that out to their parents. The kids got candy. The parents got flyers, and I saw a lot of our legislators there. So I'm going to wrap this up, but just to make it a long story short, it's a little too late for that, but... <laughs> I just love talking about what we're doing, advocating our legislators. Yes, we are getting to them. We're doing everything the COABE says that we should do, going on, getting those templates. But at the same time, we're, do, we're getting in the communities. And this has had such an effect. We started in one county, but all of our counties now in the state, all of our teachers and everyone is starting to get out on the weekends and just really just pushing adult education out there. Thank you so much, Lucy. And I could just to kind of give you a snippet from the chat as everybody's really excited <laughs> about these cool ways, uh, these innovative ways that you have brought adult ed kind of to the forefront in your in your community. Because as you said, um, it is a very effective method for advocacy. Um, and it, it is certainly creative. And of course, advocating within your community can help to reduce some of those barriers that your learners and your program face. I'll also say, I see um, Lawrence in the chat mentioned that they participated in a monthly farmer's market, which provided outstanding exposure to be able to speak with people. So I'd, I'd love if anybody else is doing some innovative advocacy, please share that in the chat. Um, I always love mining through the chat for new ideas that can be implemented. So another um, aspect of advocacy and Lucy, you're welcome to, to speak on this as well to add anything you'd like to it, but it, I mean, Advocacy April challenges us to amplify, amplify the voice, voice of adult education throughout the month. And in doing so, it's really important to work with a team or a partner on some of the work that you're doing. Yeah, I would like to add to that. Thank you. Um, during Advocacy April, um, I think it's important for uh, our new, 
our new advocates, as you said, to to partner with teams and stuff. When uh, I found that when we're advocating, um, you can't advocate alone because advocating does mean teamwork. It does mean fellowship. It means bringing everyone together. So uh, I found that if you give everyone a part and you make them feel like they're just as important and they really are, they're so important, everyone is uh, in getting this done, that you will jump over hurdles, burials, bar barriers will just be knocked down like crazy. And I found that my association, uh, my legislators, the co-aid, just all of us working together in harmony, it was just like a beautiful song coming out. There was nothing, and there is nothing in my state now that we're not doing Advocacy April, I would I would insist that everyone uh, put your contacts out there, put your name out there, be proud that you're an advocate and just put it out there and bring your team right now is a is an important part of bringing your team together and getting and I hate to go back to it. I'm a music person, but your beautiful song together. Let's let's just sing it out. <laughs> I love metaphors and I love the song one. <laughs> and so kind of who Lucy mentioned, like the different people that you can partner with, um, right? Your state association, if you have one. So I know many people have introduced themselves in the chat, but now's a good time. If you are um, a, a Sally person, if you are on your state association board, please throw that out in the chat and make sure you say your state in case there's anybody in the chat who is looking to be part of an advocacy team. They've got some names of people that they can look into. You should also partner with your state's state advocate for adult education fellow. And again, say fellows, mentors, alumni, if you're here, please um, shout that back out in the chat so that it's, it's fresh on everybody's mind. But we'd be remiss if we do not mention the importance of bringing our adult learners to the advocacy table. They are the reason that we do the work that we do. Um, and if we do actually have any adult learners or adult education alumni here, if you want to shout yourselves out in the chat too, I would love it. Because our adult learners are, their voices are the strongest in our coalition. Right. We continue to do the work we do because there is this continuous need across the country. So please invite adult, adult learners to the advocacy table. And while I don't have all of the time to dig into everything that's available through COABE for our adult learners to help them prepare for advocacy, just know that there are a lot of resources and that that is what I do in my role is to um, help connect our adult learners. So if you have adult learners who say, yes, I want to be at the advocacy table. I want to use my voice. How exactly do I use that? Um, you can contact me. I will help you get set up with the COAB, um, the award-winning COAB ambassador training to help them prepare or work with them one-on-one. -on -one. I'll also be sharing resources throughout the month um, as well. It'll be posted in the COAB LinkedIn group. So if you're not yet part of that group on LinkedIn, I highly encourage you to join. So we are going to take a moment to actually look through the resources that you have available to you, um, because there are a lot of resources on our beautiful Advocacy April page. So a couple of the things that you are going to see, you're going to hear about an X storm, adult learner stories, legislative meeting schedule, or three click software, and so much more. But for this, let's see if I can, we're actually gonna try to drive this way so I can share my screen with you. You have access to a wonderful sample event calendar. And when you open that up, it gives you a list of the many ways that you can engage in advocacy. Now, the expectation isn't that you're going to follow this every single day because otherwise, May, you're probably going to have to sleep all month. But it does give you 
different options, different ways that you can engage in advocacy, right? Whether that is using the three-click software, writing an op-ed, um, getting in touch with either your organization, if you have a marquee, or perhaps a partnering organization and saying, hey, can we this month have some adult education facts on there? Um, and maybe even, you know, having a table set up at your local library. So there are many different ways to engage. And you can access all of those on the website. Additionally, and I just used this, is scheduling a meeting with your legislator for Advocacy April. Now, this is something to do after you've got that team together so that not everybody is sending sending uh, meeting requests, and especially because some people might have some, some ins with legislators. But if you're not sure what to say, um, and I just gave you my address, I should <laughs> ignore that, is that you can actually come in and use a message that is already highly efficient because I've used it to get legislative meetings and make a couple updates by including your name, your program, your location, and then even at the bottom, you can insert the times that you're available. And so this is a really good way for you to be able to do that first point of contact in getting a legislative meeting. big thing after those legislative meetings is we want to hear how they went. Uh, and I personally always mark every legislative meeting. I take notes because I want to remember what did that legislator care about? What were their questions? What can I follow up on? And it helps me to prepare for the next meeting so that each meeting becomes a little bit less stressful. And I will say, um, even after having over having done over 50 meetings in the past few years, uh, I do still get nervous. So if you feel like, well, I'm nervous before this meeting, so that must be a bad sign, it definitely is not. That's just the nature of advocacy. But when you share your notes, then we're able to see how, who was reached out to and what was discussed and also get a kind of a temperature check on the field. What kind of questions are legislators asking? What pushback might there be? If those meetings feel like a bit too much, you can also send an email to your legislator. This is what we lovingly call the three clicks software. And I'm gonna <laughs> scroll here and you can see who my representatives are, but when you put in your address, it automatically identifies who it should be targeting. It gives you the exact wording. There is nothing that you have to change here. However, you are more than welcome to go in and add, right? If you have a student testimonial, if you have additional information that you think that this legislator or their staff needs to know, you can add it and then you can send the message. And I highly recommend that you read the replies that you get from the message, because sometimes that can be illuminating too, as to whether that legislator understands what adult education is, or if they're sending you something that is focused on, on K-12. Additionally, we have a Twitter storm or X storm. Twitter storm doesn't sound quite as scary, <laughs> I don't think as an X storm, but when you click on it, it will prompt you to sign in to Twitter and it will send all of the tweets for you. It does them all. It does the hashtags. It tags the legislators. There is not a single thing you need to do besides just clicking some buttons and entering your information. So that's another great way to jump in to that social media advocacy, um, even if you're unsure exactly what your messaging should be. I highly, highly encourage people to share a learner success story or work with your learners to submit their own. And these get shared on the award-winning Educate and Elevate site. And some of these are actually featured on our state fact sheets, which I will show in one second. Um, 
but as you scroll through, you'll be able to see that the learners can share who they are, their goals, their stories, and their photo, and it can all be published. So if you are submitting it, again, make sure that you have permission from your learners, but it would be a wonderful thing if you're a, a teacher in a classroom and you think, well, how can I engage in, in advocacy in a way that, you know, fuels, fuels my passions. I highly encourage you to take a class session and work on storytelling, on having students tell their stories and encourage them to come onto this site and to share their stories for Advocacy April. Additionally, if you're curious about, well, what exactly are we advocating for? Yes, on behalf of adult education, but what is it exactly? Here we have a wonderful sheet that gives an outline of who COABE is and what we are asking for, the funding requests, the policy requests, and you can look through uh, and learn a little bit more about that as well. So we want to make sure that you have all the tools you need that you feel like you can speak on these topics. And then lastly is our master guide. And the master guide gives you a very nice walkthrough of everything, the goals, the asks, the purposes, and also has nice links to all of those things that are right there on the page. So if you prefer to save this to your Google Drive, you can have access to it. It gives you talking points, including the statistics from the federal level, a sample meeting template. It really has everything there for you, uh, including some anticipated questions with some answers that you can give. So I highly recommend going through, taking some time this week and looking through the, the document that is available to you. Let me switch my share back up here. Okay. So those are all of the different materials. And thank you, Julie, <laughs> for typing everything into the chat. Um, everything lives right there on that website. And um, it you can find it by going to the COAB site and then under that legislative tab on the bar above Advocacy April. Everything lives there. And you are, um, again, highly encouraged to use those resources that already exist. So we've gone through some resources here and I, I want to start off Advocacy April with a commitment. Right? We have over 90 people here today together. Just imagine the kind of impact that just the 90 of us could have this month, knowing that there are more who are going to engage in this work who were just unable to be here today. So it is easier to follow through on a commitment when there's some accountability. So while I can't personally follow up with everybody who's in this webinar, writing down your goal is just as good. In fact, Dr. Gail Matthews, who's a psychology professor, professor at Dominican University in California, did a study on goal setting and found that you are 42% more likely to achieve your goals just by writing them down. And you know what? I like that, that percentage increase. So we're going to do that today. With that in mind, I ask you to share your commitments in the chat. Commit to two different ways that you are going to advocate this month. If you prefer even more accountability, I, I really encourage you to share them on social media and tag COABE. And tagging means you use the at symbol. Way you are looped 
into our network and we are going to see what those commitments are. Um, so I wanna take a moment here to give you space in the chat to actually write down what are your two commitments. And thank you, Rebecca, for starting us off with the Twitter storm and LinkedIn posts. I see Senator visits. Yes, talking to your administrator, talking to your program's potential partners about what this month is, bringing others in. I see a lot of social media, scheduling of legislative meetings, sharing student stories. Fantastic. And I really want to highlight that there is no, no commitment too small to advocacy. Um, and even if you think, well, I'm not quite comfortable with social media, I'm on there. Look for COABE's posts and repost those to your network. Oh, and now we see, all right, some wonderful things happening. I am definitely going to save this chat so that I can see everything here. And I did see a note that somebody said, sharing information about their state and about their program. And for that, I would, I'm going to loop to our next resource that is available there while everybody is typing in the chat, which is our phenomenal Educate and Elevate. And I'm going to put that link for you right into the chat. But the wonderful Educate and Elevate website, hopefully you have been here before. But this is a wonderful place where you can find the map locator tool. Click on your state. I'm in Illinois, so I'm going to use mine. And you have access to lots of different data. You have a fact sheet that you can look at that is specific to your state, right? Happens to be in Illinois, um, elementary ed that gets a $10,000 per, per pupil, we get 577. That's a statistic I love sharing with people because those numbers are sobering, right? They're painful when you're in adult education, um, but all of that information has been gathered for you, um, as well as having access to the fantastic PIAC data and adult learner success stories. Maybe you're not in the classroom right now or you don't have access to adult learners, but you want to be able to share some of their stories, whether it is with stakeholders, legislators, or just uh, out on social media. And all of those are available, right? You can click on Myra's story. You can read about it. And of course you can share. Right? In part of the um, submitting stories, it does give permission for these stories to be shared. And so that's a wonderful way of having access to those as well. And these exist for every state. Right. Texas, we're coming to you in 2025 for the conference. So we'll use <laughs> you as an example. Fact sheets, all sorts of data, student success stories, all right there at your fingertips. So that is another website. Add it to your favorites bar for Advocacy April and visit it often for whatever you need. love all of the commitments that we have and the fact that I, you know, I might just follow up with every person. I've got time. And so with that, I want to thank you for joining us today and to say that um, if there is anything at all that you do need help on, if you're wondering how do I advocate we have an incredible network of State Advocate for Adult Education fellows who are out there in social media. Um, you have 
Jeff and I and Shaketa and of course our fantastic Coab CEO Sharon Bonnie, who are all highly dedicated to to advocacy to the field and to amplifying our voice this month. So please don't hesitate to reach out if you do have any questions or anything that you need assistance with. But I do just want to say um, like our, our call to action, which is this month, let's really move the needle for adult education, for Advocacy April, um, and keep that, keep that energy from the conference going strong, paying it forward by ensuring that our voices are not lost. And thank you everyone for attending today. Thank you so much, Aaron and Jeff for sharing such valuable information. And I hope all of you now feel so encouraged to get out there and utilize your voice in support of adult education. We thank you all again for joining us here today. And we definitely send a big thank you to our CEO, Sharon Bonney, um, for pulling all of this together and making sure that we have all the tools and resources that we need to be effective in this space. I wish you all well, and please don't hesitate to reach out to us should you need any support or resources or anything that you possibly need. As Aaron said before, we are here for you every step of the way. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Bye-bye.